Hi, this is PR Frank, and today we're going to continue with our comparison between coding HTML with a text editor and coding HTML with Dreamweaver. And in this lesson, we'll do an exploration of links. There are four different kinds of links that we'll study in here. Let's get started by um, styling our navigation menu so that it acts as um, buttons. So what we have to do first is uh, it's standard practice to now style all of the items in your navigation as an unordered list. So now that I have uh, my list items here, I need to make these into links or anchors. And so we choose the anchor tag, href equals, the name of our home page is index.html. And we put the closing anchor tag on the other side of home. Now that we have all of those as links, let's go take a look at what it looks like. You can see we have an ugly navigation menu. And that's because we have to style this with CSS to make it look good. So we come on over to our style sheet. What we wanna do is our, for our selector, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna target an unordered list with a list item. And we wanna tell that list item to display inline, so we can have a horizontal navigation bar. So we just do display inline. And if we move back over and refresh, we can see that all of our links are now inline, uh, like a horizontal navigation. Now let's do some other things to it. Uh, the other thing we'd like to do is target an unordered list with a list item and an anchor tag inside of it. And what we want to do with that is we want to tell it to have text decoration none. And that, that way it, it loses the underlying property. We also want to give it some padding. Um, let's say at the top we give it 5 pixels. At the uh, right we give it 10 pixels. At the bottom we give it another 5 pixels. And at the left we give it 10 pixels once again. And let's give it a background color too. Background color. And let's go grab the background color for our side. All right, let's see how those are looking now. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this entire selector. We'll add the pseudo selector hover. And this, this will say that anytime we have an anchor that's hovered, these things will happen. So what about if we change this to underline and we keep our padding all the same, but let's change our background color to a different color. How about white? That's six Fs. And let's switch over, refresh that. Now when we hover it, the button turns white and you see a little underline. So that's some really nice interactivity. You can open your other files and copy and paste the navigation once you're happy with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and inside my nav, I'll take this whole unordered list and copy it. And I'll open my about page and inside the nav, I'll replace all of this text with that unordered list. Also in my work page. So now as we switch between the pages, they change, the titles change at the top of our page. So there's how you can make links to different pages. Uh, now let's look at how to make a link that will take us from the bottom of the page, if we scroll all the way down, back to the top of the page. The way this is accomplished is by using anchors. And anchors in HTML are simply links that target IDs. So if we go to Text Wrangler and to our index page, for example, in our header, that's the top of our page. So what we want to do is we just want to make up an ID called top. We don't even have to put it in our CSS. We just say ID equals top, and that says, hey, this header has this target of, uh, called top that we can use to navigate. 
So if we scroll to the bottom of the page, and uh, before the footer, um, maybe inside of the main after the video, we can put some text back to top. And surrounding that, we can put an anchor tag, which has href equal to the name of the ID. And IDs are indicated with the hashtag. So we say hashtag top. And we put the closing anchor tag on the other side of it. And we can save that and refresh. And let's go back to our home. At the bottom now we have this back to top button. If we click it, it takes us right back up to the header uh, which had the ID top. And as you can see in the navigation in the URL, uh, it's index.html hashtag top. We can also do this to navigate to one place on another page. Let's say on the work page, we wanted to navigate directly to this video here. Well, what I've done on the work page is I've already put in an ID in this iframe called video. So from our uh, index page, we can uh, make a link to the video on the next page. So let's just say maybe after uh, this video here, let's let's make another anchor and let's say um, see next video or something like that. And we'll make an anchor, href equals. Now, we're going to another page, so we can't just write hashtag video. We have to say what page that's on, so we say work.html hashtag video. So it'll go to the work.html page and it'll go right to the ID called video. And we also put our closing anchor tag on the other side of that. We save it. And if we refresh, go back to the home page, we can now see uh, a next video button as well as our back to top. But we can click next video and it jumps to our work page to this video on the other page. So the next thing that's popular is to t change images into links. So if I would like to take this picture of web design and link to maybe some content on the web, so I'll head over to Sparkbox and go to their website and I will highlight that. All right, so now uh, that, that I have the website copied, I go back to my HTML, I find my image, and I want to surround my image with an anchor tag, href equals paste C spark box. And on the other side of the image, I have to put my closing anchor tag. Now, there's an important thing here that you'll need to know when you link to a page that's outside of your website, it's really important to put another attribute inside of your anchor tag called target. And this will allow your browser to decide where it's going to open this. So you don't want another website to open in the same window as your website. You always want that to open another tab or another window. So we can do underscore blank and that'll just open it C Spark box in a new tab. So let's save that. Let's go back to our index page, refresh it. When we click it, it opens up in a new tab and we see sparkbox.com. And uh, one last kind of link that I'd like to show you today is called an image map. And what an image map does is it allows you to place an image and then use the different parts of that image to link to different places. Well, in this case, I've got to define coordinates for a rectangle that approximately surrounds the bottom third and the right half of this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to take out the anchor that goes to C Sparkbox because when I do an, uh, an image map, the link is actually not surrounding the image anymore. Instead, what we do inside of the image tag is we tell it to use the map called, let's just call it Sparkbox. And there's a tag called map, and map has an opening and closing tag. An attribute of map would be name, 
equals sparkbox. And then inside the map tag, we have to use the area tag. So area has multiple attributes and we have to define the shape, which is going to be a rectangle, coordinates or chords. Uh, this is a complicated part. So what we have to do, let's go back to that page. Uh, the coordinates measure uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, the first one is an X value. So how far over from the top is the coordinate? And it's about halfway across 200 pixels. So let's just say 100. Then how far down from the top? And it's about two thirds of 200 which is about 140 pixels. And then uh, how far over in the X direction for the right hand side, and we're gonna go all the way over, so that'll be 200, and then all the way to the bottom, which would be 200 again. So it's 100, 140, 200, 200, and that's, that's gonna be our coordinates. So 100, 140, 200, 200. And those, uh, once again, is an X value, a Y value, an X value, a Y value, kind of going clockwise, starting at the left, all the way around our image. The next thing we have to define for the area is where it's gonna go. So href, and I'll just paste, I believe it's still in there, yes it is. And for every image needs an alt attribute. So we use the alt attribute spark box. And we need to put target equals quotation marks underscore blank to say we would like it to open in a new tab. So we'll refresh. And when we hover the map, it doesn't have a finger until we get to the bottom right hand corner where we've defined an image map. And now it opens in a new tab. Great. Okay. So that is the text editor version of this tutorial and now we'll move over to see how to do all of the same things in Dreamweaver. Here we are in Dreamweaver with the same code and let's start by creating our menu system. Let's go to the top here to where we already have our nav. Let's actually highlight the entirety of that navigation menu and click unordered list. So now you see it automatically adds the unordered list with a list item. And what we'll do is just, we can do it up here too. We can click on in front of the word work, hit the enter button and hit the enter button with about, and now it's, it's made each one of those their its own list item. We need to turn them into anchors. So we can just double click a word that's highlighted and down here in the properties panel, that's where we can define our links. And there's three different ways to do it. So one is I can type the name of the page, index.html. Okay, and now it's a link. Uh, for work, uh, another way to do it is to go from the files panel and just try to find where the files are. Here's my, here's my work. And I can drag this quick pick and point directly to the work file and it knows where it is now. And for about, there's a third way to do it. I can click on the little folder navigate to where the about page is, tell it this is the page I want, and it puts the code in. So there's a few different ways to build your links. It's pretty easy stuff. So the next thing we need to do is of course start designing the CSS for that navigation. So what you can do is you can, you can click inside of here, um, either in your design view or your code view, and then come down and hit the plus sign next to selectors, and it automatically targets the uh, anchor tag, inside of list item, inside of our list. But the first thing we want to do, if you remember from our last tutorial, is target just the list item inside of the unordered list. Okay, hit enter. Because what I want to do is I want to change the display to inline and it will automatically put it in line. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to do is add the anchor tag to this. So we can do it again. We can click here. We can click the plus sign next to selectors and there it's targeted the anchor tag inside of the list item, inside of the unordered list. And we can begin messing with those styles. So the first thing we'll do is let's go make sure we get our background and give it a background color. It all has a background color. We also added padding. 
So let's scroll around till we can find our padding. We had five pixels at the top, we had 10 pixels at the side, we had five pixels at the bottom, and 10 pixels at the side. So there we go there. We also, if we click on all the text properties, we also wanted to have text decoration none, gets rid of the underline. There we go. And now we have our buttons formatted. And the next thing we want to do is create another set of selectors for that hover property, that pseudo selector. And one way we can do that is to control or right click here and choose duplicate. And it'll make a duplicate of that. And if you just hit the colon, it brings up all of the pseudo classes or pseudo selectors. So we click hover, enter, and now we can control what it's going to look like when we hover it. So we said for the text we wanted it underlined again. We said for the background we wanted it to be white. And so uh, in order to preview this we have to click preview in Google Chrome. It's going to ask us to save it. And now we can see that that works. That works quite well. Uh, of course, we don't have that navigation menu on the other pages. So the old-fashioned way <clears throat> is copy and paste, just like we had to do with the other one. We have to select the entire unordered list and copy it to the other two pages. Now we can click between these three pages, and we have that navigation interactivity. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add that back to top at the bottom. And that's pretty easy to do too. We can just go to our index page, scroll to the bottom, come to the right of our video, press enter, and now we have some room to type back to top. It's very easy to select that text. You'll notice when we select text in the design view, it selects it in the code view as well. And the link to go back to the top uh, once again is that hashtag top but we also need to go to if we just hover different parts you see things turn red there we go we've selected our header you get that good feedback here and here and in the DOM panel if you really wanted to know that you've got your header selected so now that we have the header selected we have a chance in our properties panel to give it an ID. And we don't need to put the hashtag in, we just need to put the word top in there and it automatically adds the ID top. So we can save that, we can come back to that browser, uh, refresh, go back to our home page, and now we have this back to top which jumps to the top of our page because we have an ID called top inside of our header. The next thing we did is to jump to another page and it's just as easy in Dreamweaver to do that. If we scroll to the bottom of our page and come next to our video and press enter, we can put some text in there that says uh, see next video. We can triple click to select that line. And you'll notice it put paragraph tags around there uh, automatically so it's going to stay on that line and the back to top is going to be on the next line. But that's a choice that you can deal with. What we need to do for the link here we already have an ID um, on our next page, on our work page, so we can go work.html, hashtag, video. And now when we scroll to the bottom of the page and we click see next video, it jumps to our work page to the bottom. And now it's just as easy as ever to make an image into a link. We click on the image, it highlights the image, then we come down to our properties panel and we just tell it what to link to. And we paste to see Sparkbox in there and we can tell it what the target is. As soon as we press tab, it gives us an opportunity now to choose, choose what the target is and underscore blank. And we can say save. And our image is now a link that takes us to a new tab for C Spark Box. Great. Now an image map is even easier. Uh, what we're gonna have to do is just like undo what we've done here. And what we do is when we select the image, 
in our properties panel is this whole map area. We can call that map C spark box. We can pick the rectangle and we can just draw right around what we want. We don't even need to go all the way to the edge like we did in the other coordinates because we can be more specific. So I can just draw that. And now you see what it's done. It has created a map name, C spark box with an area with shape rectangle and these coordinates. And we just need to tell it where to go. And we're gonna tell it to go to csparkbox.com with a target underscore equals blank and an alt attribute spark box. Okay, so it does all that. And also you'll see inside of our images, image tag, we also put the attribute C spark box, which is fantastic. So it does all of that hard work for us. And when you get into really more complicated image maps, it's a whole lot easier to use Dreamweaver or some website that creates that stuff for you. So let's save that and refresh everything over here just to see that work. There we go. Fantastic. The next lesson is going to be about how to get all this stuff onto the web. Have a good day.